Today we're taking two different techniques that we've learned. We've learned how to do iOS shadows and we've learned how to do Android shadows. If you haven't seen those two videos, I'll link to it down below. And what we're doing today is trying to match the different settings to make them look similar. After all, NativeScript is a cross-platform framework and you might want your designs to look similar on iOS and Android. So let's see how we can apply shadows to make them look the same or similar or close. We'll try. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We do native script tips, tricks, and tutorials here. And if you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button as well, you won't miss any of those that are coming up. We got some good stuff coming up, including more shadow techniques. I've got one on animating shadows coming up. You don't want to miss that. And also by request, we're doing the native script view shadow directive. So we're going to take that code that we're going to write and we're gonna extract it into a view directive. And then your views are simply going to just have another attribute. Once you put that attribute on there, you're automatically gonna get a shadow. So really cool way to work. Angular does the same thing. I'll do an Angular video as well for those folks that are into that. Now, speaking of NativeScript View, I recently did an interview with the creator of NativeScript View and this channel. Go back a few videos ago and you can check that out if you haven't seen that already. I'm also working with a group of folks that are helping me out, the beta testers for the new NativeScript with View Pro course. It's on pre-sale right now on nativescripting.com. And you can keep an eye on that page for any updates to when the chapters are coming out. We're gonna be releasing chapters as they come out and you can see the schedule for when the chapters are gonna be landing. By the way, another way you can support this channel is by grabbing a nice sweatshirt like this. It's really, really warm and comfortable. If you're living in a cold climate like I do, well, it's not really that cold here, but if you are cold, this will keep you warm. This is a hoodie and it says iScript native on it. It's a design I made. There's also t-shirts and long sleeve t-shirts, which are really nice. You can support the channel by following one of the links down below and grabbing yourself one of these. Thanks a lot, folks. Let's do this. All right, while they don't look exactly the same, here is the preview of what this looks like on iOS and on Android. And I got it as close as I could. Maybe you can tweak it a little bit more to get a little bit closer, but here are the shadows for this little box right here on iOS, and here's the shadow for the box on Android, and I think they're pretty close. All right, here's how we did it. My markup just has a content view. Now the content view is the box. We're gonna style the box with this class, my button, my BTN, and we're gonna have this on shadow loaded event. When the content view loads, we're gonna have this event triggered. And inside we have a little label here, it says hi, and we have a class, now H1 class, that large text size is coming from the theme, and so is text center, they're both coming from the theme. And this is my own class, my button label. So we'll take a look at that. Now the reason I chose content view for this, it's a very lightweight control component that only has one child. We can also use a grid layout here if we wanted to, it's gonna look the same, probably an absolute layout will also look the same but those have a lot more weight to them. So content view is a nice lightweight thing to just wrap one child. So now let's take a look at the CSS that's required to do this, app.css. All right, this already comes with a template. We don't really need that. These are the two classes we should focus on. So my button has a height defined. We have a height of 50 and a width of 50 to make a little square box like that. Why do I need that? Okay, well, if we take that out, then you'll see that we have something not working. We have iOS working, but not Android. And it's tweaks like this that I had to really work out to see the differences in the platforms. There's little tweaks here and there that you need to make in order for everything to kind of come together and work. So we need a height and width on the wrapping view, wrapping component, all right? And then this is the actual label inside. Notice I have a background color set to white. If I don't have that set, then we don't have a background color. We still have a little shadow around the text on iOS, I don't know if you can see that, but now we don't have that box shadow. So let's get that back in there, the background color of white and vertical line middle. That's going to make sure that that label states kind of in the middle vertically. The color is the text color. That's kind of optional, I guess. We can take that out. It's still black by default. We can make that color red if we wanted to. So there's a red text in the button, okay? Then the height and width. So are these necessary on the button? Well, yes. So you can see that now 
on iOS. That box is not as tall as it is wide. So it changed the dimensions there. So we do need height and width set on the inner label as well in order to keep that shape of the box. Weird platform differences like that. Now, here is the shadow implementation. You might have seen my videos here on this channel about how to apply shadows on iOS specifically and how to do it on Android. There's another video for that. But here's the combination of that for this particular case. We're calling this on shadow loaded on the content view. And there's that function in the code behind. So on shadow loaded, we're checking to see if it's iOS. We're implementing this logic for iOS. And for Android, we're doing this logic right here. Here are the settings to get it the way it looks now. Uh, let me go ahead and close this out so I can show you both at the same time here. Notice that we have a shadow radius set in iOS to four and the elevation in Android set to 20. So even if you wanted to make uh, some kind of constant number, you really can't because in iOS, the way the shadow is formed is by using the shadow offset and the radius in combination. So if I set the radius to 20, you'll see that it becomes really large and kind of spread out. Nothing like it looks on Android. Now, if I set the elevation on Android to something like 80, you can see that now we're getting to somewhere here. So you could maybe say the iOS radius is one quarter of what the elevation is on Android. Well, let's give that a shot. Let's try 16 on Android for elevation. Let's try four on iOS. And yeah, maybe that's close. Let's do eight on Android and two on iOS. Now we're getting a little bit different here. You can see that there's a certain threshold that needs to be met on Android, the size of the shadow change, but also the offset changed by changing that one property elevation. But on iOS, while the radius changed to two, and that might work very well, but the offset now needs to be changed because it's sticking out too much from the bottom. So let's make that two. I'm just guessing here. And now they look somewhat similar, although the iOS one looks a little bit darker. So you might need to adjust the opacity to 0.2 and now they look a little bit close. So you can see how these three properties in iOS control the way it looks, whereas on Android, you'll have this one set elevation property. By the way, on Android, you can see that I set the background color to white, and I did that in code. Now you might say, why don't I just do that in CSS? So let's go back to here and my button and say background color and set that to white here. So yeah, I guess apparently you could just do that in the CSS. Let me just remove that. Yeah, without it, you see that there is nothing on Android. So we do need that background color set for the wrapper. I just happen to have done it in code, but apparently you can do that in CSS as well. So on Android, you only have one thing to set and that's the elevation. On iOS, you have all these other things. We also do shapes, button shapes on iOS and therefore the shape of the shadow will be affected as well. I have a separate video on that as well. Check that out. I do hexagonal or octagonal buttons with octagonal shadows. It's pretty cool. So you can do really crazy things with iOS as far as shadows goes. You have a lot more control, but you don't have the simplicity that you get on Android with setting just the elevation property. Now, what would be really cool is you can write some kind of uh, library by creating some kind of algorithm that uh, gives you values for the shadow opacity for iOS, radius and offset as it relates to the elevation in Android and just use one value that you would set the shadow to and that algorithm will calculate all these other properties based on that to have it look similar. But you'd need to really examine what each one of these does and create that formula. And there probably is one out there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. If you did find it or if you know how to do that, let me know in the comments down below. Next, we're doing shadow animation. You now have all the tools you need to be able to create shadows, different kinds of shadows on Android for text layers and for layout layers. And you also have a technique I showed you how to do this in iOS in a previous video. So now we're gonna combine all that knowledge and animate those shadows. We're also gonna use the technique I showed you in the NativeScript JavaScript animation video. It's called animate anything in JavaScript. So if you haven't seen that, it's a pretty popular video. Go back in the channel and take a look at that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. And if you have any other questions or tutorials you wanna see, let me know down in the comments. You can also reach me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.